Hello, my name is Pramathesh Borkotoki and you are listening to your favorite uh, podcast. Uh, the name of the podcast is Borkotoki and Borkotoki in Assamese means talkative. So in this po uh, podcast, we just talk, talk about different things, but mostly related to poetry. The concept behind uh, starting this podcast was to make uh, people engage in poetry, whether you are a common person or a specially a talented person, it doesn't matter. We just want you to read poetry, listen to poetry, and if possible, also write poetry. And today I have a, a wonderful guest with me. The last time I, I met her, she was in Kerala, but she has been in different uh, parts of the world, uh, especially Philippines and Malaysia. And right now she is jo joining from Johabaru, Malaysia. So welcome to uh, uh, Dr. Maitham. Thank you, Pramatesh. It's an honor to be with you and it's an honor to be a part of what you do. I've always enjoyed the stuff that you do, your writing, your poems, all of that. I'm so thankful and grateful to be here. Honored to be here, actually. So my first question is, when did you start poetry? Nice. That's always something that I've thought about as well. I started writing poetry for the sake of my peace of mind. It was a time when I was going through a very difficult time and um, there were a lot of issues. I was a teenager and I was away from home. Away from home in a different culture, in a different setup. It, it was different. Everything was different. and. I found it difficult to talk to anyone because of the differences that we had or I had with the people. And poetry is something I've always written, actually. Um, even when I was in grade school, I used to write simple poems as part of schoolwork. But it's always been at the back of my mind that poetry is something that releases emotions that are convoluted, that are confused, that are difficult to express in words, in verbal. I'm not able to vocalize or verbalize my emotions, so I always ran back to poetry. That's how it started. Needless to say, as a result of that, my poems are very mel melancholic. Okay. They, are, they portray a sadness, which probably I can speak about later. Why melancholy? Uh, uh, why should we go <laughs> keep it for later? Let's speak it, about it go now. For it? Okay. I was away from home and I'm basically a very sentimental, emotional character. And I've always felt, even, in, at home, uh, even when I was a, a, a child, that I was never understood. There was no one to listen to me. I had nowhere to turn to. And yeah, and, and it made me feel that life was difficult and there was no happiness really. Therefore, my poems that I wrote always gravitated towards insecurities, unfulfilled dreams, the lack of being able 
to be understood. The lack of, I couldn't be, I wasn't understood. I always felt I was a square peg in a round hole. And I, and I kept that for a very long time. It's just I couldn't fit anywhere. Therefore, the words that would emit from me would naturally be sad, depressing, anxious, insecure. Mm -hmm. So that was always melancholy there. That's how it, it mm -hmm. came up that way. Okay. Maybe at that time you uh, felt like that, but looking back, do you still feel the same? Uh, yes. At that time, you were right? Yes, I still feel the same way. In fact, I I'm about to tear up even as I speak about it. Those were the, the era or the times of my life where, if you ask me, I don't think I'm even completely healed of it. I haven't come out of it. That's why I guess when I'm talking about it, I actually feel like crying. They were very, very sad and lonely moments. Yeah, I need to think about this. <laughs> Maybe mm. that's me, you know. My my life has um, moved in that way. I'm always a loner. So I'm not sure if I was born that way or circumstances made me that way. I really don't know. Okay. That's not there into that uh, part of it uh, more. Um, <laughs> because there are other facets of poetry that uh, we are here to discuss as well. So, Absolutely. Apart from melancholy, have you ever uh, tried to explore other emotions through poetry? Not really. When words were not enough to express my emotions, I started mm -hmm. drawing and painting. I felt that I could express more with artwork. Okay. So I did not, maybe, who knows? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Maybe churning out sad words, you know, emotions that were painful and putting it down in words was actually more disturbing than the emotion itself. Maybe. Okay. Maybe that's the reason why I switched to artwork. I felt a better expression. And if you look at my artwork that I used to do at that time, it was always, and I love these um, half, half paintings where one side is black and one side is white. I'm not sure why, in and young, which I didn't know at that time. I was such a kid. Okay. Perhaps now in hindsight, there was something inside me that, that made me think intuitively that there is a black and a white there is a good and the not good there is there is a duality i oh. always dwelled on duality yeah that that's that, that's for sure i always dwelt in uh, dwelled in duality so my artwork is always a black and white uh, two facets of a face a sunrise and a sunset hmm yeah the waves on the beach and the beach. Wow. What a revelation. I never thought of that until now that I spoke about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always got a, a dual, a dual, you know, the scene. The scene is always dual. Perhaps that is the ultimate uh, goal of expression, or, or so, whether it's through poetry, by speaking, or through art. You discover new facets of your life. Absolutely, yes. I can feel it already. I'm talking about this. See, poetry is something that I've shelved for a very long time. I would say for about 20, 30 decades. I've not looked into it. And now that I'm talking about it, I have a feeling that it could have been because I was upset with my own poems. <laughs> Must be. Because I remember they were very, very, they're not dark, but they were very, very down and depressing. 
they were not dark. I, I, I wouldn't say it's dark, but it was very down and depressing. A, a little girl or a young girl who is expressing her, her pain, in simple words, yeah. Okay. Now that you have mentioned that you have not indulged in uh, poetry for a very long time, so would you like to start again? To be honest, to be, I mean, to, to actually speak about it, I did try, especially during lockdown. That was the time when I had a lot of time. So I did try, but it's not coming. It's not coming as as it used to. I think it's because um, a lot of those emotions have already been healed. And I I connect poetry with my childhood. I don't see myself as an adult writing poems anymore, but I never know. You never know. I may just come back to it. Never know. You mentioned a very important point that uh, emotions were uh, are not that intense right now. Mm -hmm. so, so, why do you think that the emotions have to be intense to write poetry? Mm, good question. Even as I was saying this, that was in my mind as well. I'm thinking like, why do I why why connecting poetry to Negative emotions. Hmm. Let me just give it some thought. I think. Um, I think it's because that's the only way I could express myself. Oh, it's not just about you. Like you said that the emotions are not that intense. That's why the poetry is not coming. And mm. other people also say uh, the same thing. Like. When they were in love, they used to write better poems. Or when they were depressed about some kind of loss, they wrote poetry. Mm. And or sometimes they just see something very beautiful, like a bird uh, sitting uh, in a window and singing, they write poetry. Like anything that in, uh, amuses them, but they, it has to uh, come uh, in a very intense way so that words keep flowing. Uh, why do you think it is very... Uh, yes. You see, poetry is emotion in motion. Mm -hmm. Therefore, one needs to have very intense emotions, whether they are negative or positive, to allow those words to flow. Because poems have a, 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 a particular structure. Mm -hmm. You have that, that rhymes every four lines. I forget all those words. I used to teach literature. Uh, the, those that are, they come, they rhyme at every line or they rhyme at every second and fourth line, you know, like that, alternate mm -hmm. lines. And they have those kind of poetry. So poems are written with a certain structure and we need to use certain words when you write poems. See, if I'm writing a, a text, a prose, I can just write with any form of vocabulary, any narrative, I can just write it out and create paragraphs and it becomes mm -hmm. a, a, an article or text. But in poems, it's a bit different. You have to choose the words to a certain extent. And some poems are written in an ambiguous manner mm -hmm. that only the, the, the poet, the person who's writing it, understands the deep meaning of it. I guess that is why we are more moved with sadness rather than with joy i think I'm, I'm trying to analyze this as well as i speak i guess it's that 
Because let's say now, I'm very happy and joyful about being in love, for example. Very intense emotions, very deep. Now, what do I write about that? Because it's a very personal, heartfelt, deep, heart-moving, touching emotion. I don't think I want to put that in words. I, I don't know, maybe it's me. It could be that. Because if I have those emotions, I'm going to tell my partner about it. I'm going to tell him my intense emotions. Once it's out, you've told, you've spoken it, mm -hmm. you really don't have any more words left to write it. You know what I'm saying? Because it yeah. kind of, you know, all these emotions are circling in your head. Once it's out, out it goes, whatever the medium is. I guess that's the reason. That's a very interesting point, actually, because <laughs> once it's uh, out, so it doesn't have to be poetry. And I, I can also go back to uh, what you said. Uh, the, like, most of the good uh, uh, love poems are written in an imaginary way, like to an imaginary lover. Kind of thing, or one-sided love, or mm, yeah, yeah, or before expressing it to uh, to the lover, even if, if it's not one-sided, before expressing it, they put it down in the uh, paper. So it has to be like a very before. Uh, if I, I am so someone who can. Right, uh, express my thoughts in uh, as a poem um, uh, rather than saying it to someone. I would do do that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> based on person to person. So right, right. And I also think that poetry has gone out of fashion. I I may be wrong, but this is a feel I get because we are so caught on to social media and putting everything out on Facebook, on IG or whatever social media platforms there are, people express their thoughts, feelings, emotions on social media. And I don't really think social media is interested to, to read one-liners or, or maybe just uh, two-liners like that. People want to hear the full gamut of emotions from someone who is ranting you see? So I think I think that poetry has gone out of out of sync, out of fashion. Not exactly. Even in social media, it has actually empowered poetry. It gives us a third dimension, you can say, in a way. Like, you can give your voice, you can give your, give your face to... Uh, to, to the poet when he is doing a, a poetry mm. reading. Right, so right, right. People are engaging in poetry in that I way so. as well. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe and I'm uh, out of sync. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Yeah. And there was uh, something else th that caught my attention when you were speaking. You said that only the, the poet who has written the poem knows the exact meaning of a poem. So exactly, yeah. But what do you think about reading poetry? So like uh, if I'm I'm, a, uh, I'm reading a po poetry, I'll interpret it in, uh, in my own way. Not necessarily the same as how the poet wanted it right. to be. Right, right. So, My thoughts on that? If, so if you are reading poetry, how does it uh, help you? Okay. I still read poems once in a while, particularly when I was teaching literature. We had to do a whole mm -hmm. set of poems. And the thing is that if it's something easily understood, then I know where the poet is coming from, mm -hmm. what he's trying to say, what she's trying to say. 
I would understand. But there are some very complicated ones. When I read the first or second line, and then I go like, hmm, what is this about now? And I'm not able to interpret or analyze it. Generally, I will try to read the whole thing and get a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And if I still don't get it, then I'll just go like, okay, move on. (laughs) Next one. I don't really sit down and try to figure out what the poet was poet was trying to say. I really don't. I guess it's lack of time. I mean, how much time do we have to sit down and analyze and see? Okay. We're working, we've got home uh, home responsibilities, we have so much you know on our plate, you know. So I would appreciate okay. yes, I would appreciate a a, a poet who actually things of that aspect of the reader, of the one who's reading his poem. I think that is useful, which to me is important. See, if I were to write something, let's say I were, to, if I were to write something now, I would make sure that what I'm writing is understood by the reader and it's appreciated. And most of all, it inspires the person. Like the road less traveled, how that that has that even inspires me today if I were to see that. Yes. So there's some poems that just strike everyone across the board. It just strikes everyone. So I think those yeah. poems are, are really, you know, classic. I mean they they really appeal, you know. Generations after generations, it will appeal. Talking about generations, if I may divert a little bit. My children, they are Gen Z, Gen, um, I'm not even sure what gen they are, millennials or whatever they're called. If, uh, my younger one, she's in her 20s. If I tell her, hey, this is a nice piece of work, she doesn't even look at it. You know, it's like, look at it. I say, hey, appreciate it. You've got to understand what the feeling, what, what the feelings of people, right? No, mom, later. And the later never comes. So you see, our new generation is very different. I wonder where poetry will go over the years, notwithstanding AI coming in and creating their own <laughs> brand of poetry. Okay. I just hope that just like I started liking poetry in the age of 30, yeah. uh, your uh, daughter also starts liking poetry at some age. Who knows? Yeah. From the way I see it, I don't think so. They're they're wired differently. These young people are wired differently. I, I, not my children. I don't think so. I don't know. But I've got no problems if they do. I've got no problems if they don't. But I know, just to mention, Joseph Nguyen, I'm sure you've heard of his book. Yeah? Yeah. He writes, he writes from deep within his soul. I can see it's coming from there. But he's young gen. He's new gen. And if there are such people who are very deep, old souls coming down from, uh, I would use the word many lifetimes, they have seen, experienced, they know that soul is very matured. I think these are the ones who would actually, though they are young, they may go back mm-hmm. to it. My opinion. Okay. I'll just uh, come back to uh, one point that you actually mentioned and held my attention. is like, if I write something, the reader has uh, to understand, if not the same person, but Closely to what, what I meant to say. Uh, so, uh, in interpretation, uh, there are two schools of thought. Uh, one school also looks into the history of the poet and tries to interpret what the po- poet actually tries to convey. And there is another school who tries to analyze the po- poem regardless of what was uh, 
in his past as a one piece of work or just look into the structure and what are the nuances that the poet left as a hint uh, maybe the structure in the structure there was a hint maybe the words that, that were uh, chosen that were also uh, in, in so that is one school so based on that 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 the interpretation is uh, so it is a very nuanced kind of analysis so true that uh, based on what you said i think that you are in the uh, second school uh, school author <laughs> regardless of the poet who wrote it what was his past you try to understand uh, a poem if the it does not make any sense you just move on yeah so i guess it's a lack of time it's not a lack of interest it's a lack of time because sometimes to sit down and and really go through each sentence yeah. each word it takes time and you know time is like so uh, it's not just about time also i think that in the first school there is also a bias of thought that because of mm -hmm. that past it might have uh, been the uh, meaning but when you are uh, looking at uh, in seal, uh, silos you are actually looking at the core uh, message at that moment what was the poet feeling regardless of his past mm -hmm. maybe he might have uh, is uh, something uh, a very uh, different kind of past but at that moment he might be feeling it, uh, uh, something completely that is not related to his past right to be fair to him or her yeah so i think uh, your uh, way of uh, thinking uh, also helps in getting out of bias hmm yeah I, i i always believe that you know i yeah. no judgment against the person mm -hmm. even in my normal day to day activities no judgment the person is who he is or she is no judgments okay so now coming to the main core uh, idea behind our podcast is like why should a, a Uh, a person engage in poetry like we have so many pe uh, people who who don't uh, consider the poetry as a general thing but it's a kind of a very intellectual exercise so and even you said that the new generation uh, that you have met are not so keen in in poetry mm. so why do you think that every person should have at least uh, some kind of engagement in poetry you have rightfully said that poetry is an intellectual pursuit mm -hmm. it takes quite a bit to come up with the rhyming to come up with the correct vocabulary it takes quite a bit your language must be strong you mm -hmm. cannot imagine just like um i use i say this because my father used to tell me that tamil tamil mm -hmm. has the most intrinsic language which is perfect for literature deep literature and very deep poetry now my father knows tamil well so he can appreciate what he's reading i don't know tamil well so i i cannot i cannot even read what is what's written there so it takes a certain level of intellectual capacity in my opinion to be able to write that much of text 
write that that those lines, those those vocabulary with all the different nuances and deep inner meaning. It's not simple prose. So I would say it's an intellectual pursuit. And it's a very deep emotional pursuit as well. If a person is uh, not a deep person, I don't think they can come up with with um, such great works. Rabindranath Tagore, Rumi, they are great people. Well, of course, I'm not saying that only they can write. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of ordinary, good old people who can also write good poetry. But what I'm trying to say is that to really impact, I think the person must use a certain element of intellectual capacity and the person who's reading it should also have good knowledge of the language in which the poem is written. I couldn't read a, a Hindi poem <laughs> because I don't understand. Even, I, even though I'm able to, able to read the words, but I'm, I don't know how to interpret it or any other language. I could only appreciate poetry in English because English is my first language. I wouldn't be able to do it in any other language because it's deep. Okay. Now, uh, you have uh, made a very interesting point that it is, it needs uh, um, intellect and emotional uh, quotient as well. So, do you think that reading poetry can improve our intellect and emotional question? Yes, it can. I say this with confidence because I used to teach literature at uh, what we call um, high school. Mm -hmm. Did I teach in college? No, it was in high school. When I get, see, and also my, my program for literature was a guaranteed A program, meaning any student who comes to me is guaranteed to get an A in the results, in their grades. Okay, in Malaysia, literature is, a, is an elective subject. So many of them who are good in, in the language, to get an extra A, they would do extra subjects, and literature was one of them. And I used to guarantee that. Now, how did I do that? My first condition was that your language must be strong. Your English language must be strong. Okay, so I already got, I already win over there because I get the best students with the strongest mm -hmm. English. Number two, you may come in without, these are children, right? They are 17, 18. You may come in with little literary knowledge or little emotional quotient. Let's call it that, as you said just now. But when I finish the class after one year, they are changed people. My students have changed. They're not only getting an A, they become more emotionally aware. Because there's a certain way to answer the question in the exam. And I teach them how to do it. So I tell them, if you do not write with your emotions, you are not going to get your, get your grades. If you do not analyze the poem properly and give the answers that are the best lead to that poem, you're not going to get your grades. So they sit down and figure it out. And then some, there are some classes. My classes are two hours per session. There are some class, classes where just two lines, it will take two hours to even get anywhere near to it. And then they say, they will say, oh, miss, this is too boring. I can't do this. And these are young kids huh, in the new generation. I said, well, do you want your A? Sit down and analyze it for me. And I won five points from each line. Now, they came out of it after that one year, different people. So that made a difference. They understood that poems have a magic of its own. They understood that those words were not just words. They had a very deep meaning, which they could resonate with. So definitely, 
if, if children were taught poems in school in, in its in its entirety or in its correct way, it would change the person. It adds value to the the, the human persona. It adds value, definitely. Yeah, I speak from experience. So you are saying that they also become more passionate. Uh, passionate. Yes. So literature yeah. has that that power. Literature in its uh, studying literature, literary works has that kind of power. Whether it comes from a, a book, a literary book, um, whether it's a poem or it's uh, some work, it has that power because you're actually sitting down and thinking about it. If I ask the question, let me see, the literature book that I was teaching at that time was Fahrenheit 451. Forget okay. the name of the author. Yeah, it was that book. That book, have you read that book? If you've read it, you would know. It evokes a lot of, it even evoked anger in my students because they were so angry that all the books were burned down. They were okay. so angry that there was mind control. And, and, there was a part where, where the question was, do you think this would happen in your lifetime? They all said, I hope not. So it made them think that, hey, mind control is real. The narrative of switching and indoctrinating people is real. Even though it seemed like fiction, that's what my students told me at the end of, I mean, they told me a lot of things when we finished our literature class. Okay. They came in as something. They left with something bigger. That's the power of literature, poems, art, um, books, novels. Yeah. So that's a very powerful point that uh, you have made. And I hope that this also uh, encourages our viewers to engage in poetry. Yes. And read more po poems. And with this, uh, I think, uh, note, uh, we should uh, conclude our uh, sure. Thank you uh, for being a part of this wonderful. Uh, and there were quite the powerful uh, nuggets that I gathered and I will also look into the book called Fahrenheit 451 and sure, I will also yeah. try to become more emotionally aware as you say <laughs> thank you thank you for being a part of Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It is a pleasure talking to you. And you know, as I was talking, a lot of things that were at the back of my mind that was in the, in the back burner kind of came forward because it brought back a lot of memories of my time with literature, with poetry, you know, my own writings and all of that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. I've got something to think about after this. <laughs> I hope you can also st start uh, writing um, poetry after some uh, reading. So yeah, maybe. I hope you, you also start a new uh, phase of writing poetry, maybe in a happier note this time. Yeah, never know. I know, right? <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>